Before starting this video, I do want to give a thank you to my patrons that support the channel. And if you would like to support the channel, there are some great benefits for you in the link down below. So with that, let's get into today's video. What's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pub Stomp MTG. So with this video, I'm going to go over Vresten Manoptra Leader. The big reason why I wanted to go over this commander today is while I was going through the Doctor Who list and seeing some of the potential commanders that came out of it, I saw this one and I knew immediately I had to make a deck tech around it because first of all, I'm a big art guy so the art looks absolutely incredible with Vresten in the front with its alien army in the background. So first of all, what does the card do? So for X green green and a white it's an alien insect scout and it does have flying it enters the battlefield with x11 counters on it also when it does enter the battlefield you create x11 green and white alien insect creature tokens with flying it and on top of that whenever you do attack with one or more insects you put a 1-1 counter on each of them so obviously this is going into the token theme and also the 1-1 counter synergies in the deck so there's a lot of ways to abuse this especially putting so much counters on a creature so that we could overwhelm our opponents i will say it is a pretty generic ability just put tokens on the battlefield then attack to make your insects even bigger but i will say this does look like a pretty interesting and fun new uh, insect tribal leader so first in this video i do want to talk about utility for our deck so what kind of goals are we trying to accomplish of course we want to go into that one one counter synergy so the first card i did think about was tribute to the world tree so for triple green whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control you draw a card if its power is three or greater Otherwise, put two well encounters on it. I've been putting this in a lot of my green decks because either way, you could get a card draw option or you could buff up your little tiny creatures. So all the insects that do come on the battlefield, including Vreston, can get buffed. So instead of 1-1 one, one flying insects on the battlefield, they'll become 3-3s three right away with tribute to the world tree. In a similar fashion, I do want to mention hardened scales pretty quickly, mainly because for one green mana, if one or more 1-1 one, one counters would be put on a creature you control, that many plus 1-1 one, one counters are put on it instead. So when our commander does attack and it does trigger to put 1-1 counters on all insects we control, instead it's going to put two 1-1 counters on them. And this is all in a 1 mana investment so I feel like this is well worth it in the deck to include. We do, however, want to have some card draw options, so the first card I did think about was Return of the Wild Speaker, mainly because if Rustin is huge on the battlefield, or if we do have a huge insect on the battlefield, we could draw cards based off of its power, or this could be a great overrun effect. If we do have a lot of insects on the battlefield, they will get plus three, plus three until on a turn, all at instant speed, so this could be a nice combat trick. If some people don't block into your insects, you could just cast this in response and catch your opponents off guard with a huge insect army, even bigger with Return of the Wild Speaker. Aside from that, I know these are not insects with the next cards I'm going to mention, but I do want to mention Oron Frostfang and Toski Bear of Secrets. If you are in a go-wide strategy, these are excellent in any type of deck, mainly because with Oron Frostfang, it will give your creatures death touch that are attacking, and also whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. Same thing goes for Toski. Having these abilities, especially with our insects being in the air flying, they have that evasion, so in most cases, they could swing in uncontested unless uh, another person is playing a big giant tr uh, dragon tribal deck. So again, I do feel like these are all stars in any kind of deck where you're going wide with a lot of creatures, especially if they do have evasion where you can swing in, draw a bunch of cards to refill your hand, and then go off and do some more shenanigans. And the last card I do want to mention in this section is Damning Verdict. So for three and two white, destroy all creatures with no counters on them. So the biggest reason why I do have this is obviously for the fact that all our creatures will have counters on them, especially if they keep on swinging with Reston on the battlefield. They'll have so much counters on them that this won't even make a big difference in our game plan, but most of our opponent's creatures won't have counters on them unless they're playing like a counters deck. So obviously this is going to be more of a benefit on our side if we do have a large army on the battlefield with counters on them and our opponents don't have anything else on the battlefield. In the next couple turns, we could possibly swing for the win here and there. But let's talk about insects. So there's so many insects to choose from. It's kind of ridiculous with the amount of stuff we do have. But we got to talk about a classic insect and that's Hornet Queen. So this is an all-star in any go-wide strategy. So for four and triple green, it's an insect and it does have flying death touch as a 2-2 body. When it does enter the battlefield, you create four 1-1 green insect creature tokens with flying and death touch. 
So there are many reasons to like this card. The big reason is, of course, you're making your board stay bigger by having five creatures enter the battlefield in total with this card just alone. Also, your opponents will think twice attacking you with a big creature on the battlefield because they may not want to lose it to the one little insect that does have death touch on the battlefield. So in most cases, this is a great deterrent, obviously being a hornet. Nobody wants to touch hornets. So aside from that, I do feel like this is a great fit in the deck. Another great fit, and honestly I hate this card, but it's so dang good in this deck, and that is Scoot Swarm. But not even kidding, I really do hate this card, but the only reason why I'm mentioning it today is the fact that it is an insect, and we are going with a big giant army of insects that we could buff up with our commander. So yeah, Scoot Swarm is a card. So whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control, you create a 1-1 green insect creature token. If you control 6 or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm swarm instead so what's so bad about this it's just making bugs until you realize you have a giant infestation of like 500 scoot swarms on the battlefield each time a land entering the battlefield whether it's a fetch land or another land that's entering the battlefield so yeah there's many reasons to hate this card at least in my opinion i know some other people like this card so i'm not going to bag on it too much however i do want to talk about a card that's very good and utility wise and that's haywire might so for one mana when it does die you gain two life also, you can sacrifice it by paying a green mana, exile target non-creature artifact or non-creature enchantment. Also, I think I looked up the card online for the price, and it's like 3 to $4 and like $7 for the foil. So honestly, that's pretty ridiculous for this card. I mean, it's well worth it as a one mana investment. But this card is very good in situations. Say, for example, somebody casts a board wipe. In response, you sacrifice this to exile a target artifact or enchantment that that player controls. So again, I like this for the utility, and also it's an insect, so it works very well for our commander. But here comes the chunk. The next card I do want to talk about is Giant Antiphage. This is is very similar to Scoot Swarm in the way where it makes clones of itself. So for 7 mana, it does have Trample, and when it deals combat damage to a player, you create a token that's a copy of Giant Ataphage. So basically, every combat you go into, you swing it with Giant Ataphage, you make a token copy of it, you go into your next combat phase, you swing with both of them, and then you have a total of 4 on the battlefield, and so on and so forth until you basically have no more combats because everybody's dead because of this card. So in my opinion, this is the more fair version of Scoot Swarm. Again, I know I'm uh, kind of giving a rant about how much I hate Scoot Swarm, but again, this is a more fair version of that where you're going the clean, honest way of combat. But let's fly over to our next card with Luminous Broodmoth. This debuted in Ikoria, and this is a very good card overall. So for two and two white, it is insect and it does have flying. When a creature you control without flying dies, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it. So this doesn't really synergize with our commander mainly because it has flying and if it does enter the battlefield again, it'll enter the battlefield as a 0-0 because remember you have to pay X into its cost. But this does work very well with other insects we do have that don't have flying where we could recur them onto the battlefield. So honestly, this is a very good piece in the deck. So insects are great at all, but we do want to win the game. There's a lot of ways we could do so. Even our Commander of Reston does have that ability of putting 1-1 counters on each insect we control that are attacking. Just having that win con staple to our commander is incredible so that we can just kind of swing away with our big giant flying army. Aside from that, we do also have some other great win cons that involve 1-1 counters. So of course, cards like Cathar's Crusade will get the job done for us. So for 3 and 2 white, whenever a creature enters a battlefield under your control, you put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control. So that does include tokens and non-tokens. So say for example, we paid 5 into Vrestin. 6 insects will enter the battlefield simultaneously, putting 6 1-1 counters on each insect we control. And that's just one scenario that I could think of that could make this card super busted in this type of deck, especially when we want to have a lot of 1-1 counter synergies. There are also other ways we could buff up all our insects that are on the battlefield. Say we use cards like Door of Destinies and Coat of Arms. These essentially have that same kind of ability of buffing up our creatures. For example, with Door of Destinies, for 4 mana, you choose a creature type. Obviously, you're going to choose Insect. I mean, if you want to go Alien Tribal, I feel like that's a fun strategy to go by. But whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, put a charge counter on Door of Destinies. And creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one for each charge counter on it. So the more insects you do cast, the bigger your insects will become with Dora Destinies. Coat of Arms is a little different. Each creature gets plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield. That shares at least one creature type with it. So if you have a huge board of insects, the bigger they will each become because of this card. This card is quite insane with the more insects you do have on the battlefield. 
But the last win con I do want to mention in the deck is obviously Triumph of the Hordes. The main reason why I wanted to add this is because Infect with Insects, I don't know, I feel like that kind of works in harmony with each other. So for two and two green, until end of turn, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain Trample and Infect. I do realize I'm putting the Fortnite card up here, but honestly, that's the first one I saw and I just grabbed it so I could put it on the screen. However, I feel like this is a very good card in the deck because we have a lot of evasive flyers. So just buffing them up with this card on top of Reston or other insects attacking, putting 1-1 counters on each of them will be pretty insane, especially giving them Infect and Trample. So for me personally, this is quite a flavorful card, mainly due to the fact that insects most of the time will infect some hosts here and there. I mean, I guess technically they would be called a parasite. Anyways, aside from that, I do feel like this could be a great win con in the deck. However, that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on this very new Doctor Who Commander, Vreston. I feel like this could be a very powerful commander in the right type of situations. As a insect tribal leader, this is very powerful. I mean, the only downside of this commander is the fact that it doesn't have black in its color identity. The main reason why I say that is because there's so much good insects that do have gold gallery color combinations. But I do like the fact that Vreston is essentially a win con in the command zone. I mean, I know it's not a combo piece in the command zone, but it's a great win con having that ability to buff up all the insects you do control and making more insects when you pay into that X ability. But let me know down below in the comments, do you plan on building this commander? I do feel like it can be pretty powerful, again, in the right type of situation, going that full insect tribal route. Also, is there any other commanders you plan on building for this new Doctor Who set? There's a lot of commanders that came out with this, especially a lot of different combinations between Doctors and also the Companions, like the Doctor Companions. There's a lot of fun and exciting ones. Please let me know down below in the comments, which one do you plan on building? I'd love to kind of go around and share some of my thoughts about these commanders. Well, with that out of the way, thank you for stomping by.